Page. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. The Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will begin. The Board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, there being no preliminary matters on the AM docket, case number, I think, Mr. Kodensky. Commissioners, um, if I can, um, I have the last case. Um, Dr. Huey is scheduled uh, to perform surgery at um, 1130. He said if he could um, you know, take his case, he's got a surgeon over in Hopkins. Okay. Uh, uh, with apologies to those who may have to wait an extra moment, let's uh, accommodate the doctor, okay? And his, and his patient, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that number seven, Mr. Kodensky, on the AM docket? Yes, that's correct. What's the name of the, what's the name of the? Is this the trade name? The trade name? Boston a Street. Oh. Okay. Boston Street, yeah. Yeah. Uh, calling the case of Little Chang LLC, trade name pending, 2322 Boston Street. This is a class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, an application to transfer ownership of a class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, presently located at 1010 Alisana Street, to 2322 Boston Street, requesting outdoor table service and off-premise catering. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kodensky representing the applicants. Good morning. Would you okay. folks raise your right hands, please? How do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. This is a transfer of a license uh, from Inner Harbor East uh, up to Boston Street. Boston Street has had a uh, license there for a million years and on the corner there. Um, actually, my son only had the gin mill there for years, and it's going back, fork and wrench, same, that same building on it. Uh, the doctor has bought, purchased the buildings there for uh, over a million dollars. Uh, he lives in um, President Street, um, which is right down the street. Um, he plans on uh, making it in an Asian uh, restaurant. Uh, I have for you a copy of the uh, menu. Uh, I can't read the... Chinese part of it, but. Uh, is this license presently a outdoor table service and off-premise catering license as well? Is it BD7? Everyth everything's the same on the everything's license? Everything's the, 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 the use permit for Boston Street has outdoor table service pursuant to BMZA uh, and has also has um, uh, the other portion of it. Um, Do you have anything to demonstrate that? I don't, I didn't see anything that in the files. That There's it's the last page of our uh, my mistake. Gotcha. Yeah, when the fork and wrench was there, and then there's an I have an application to, for the same thing. Okay, I just wanted to make sure there was no change. Right. And um, uh, the doctor will uh, primarily um, uh, be there uh, one every day. Uh, the young lady here, I'm going to put her on. She has all the um, uh, experience in the business, having worked here and her family for a number of years. They claim that probably it's going to be like 80-20, 80, 80 food, maybe 20. Um, in most uh, Asian places, the alcohol is not a, um, a big portion of um, uh, their um, uh, output. So um, they'll have their people alcohol certified, open 11 o'clock, probably to 11 o'clock at night or so to start with. And um, the uh, license that was there, um, I think was lost due to some tax issue, and I don't know, don't know what it is. It, ironically, Jason Sanchez had it, and uh, he works at Giada's now down in the casino. Yep. State your name, address. Hi, my name is Yu Zhang. I go by Lydia. Uh, can you spell your name, please, for our report? Yes. Uh, first name, Y-U. Last name, Z-H-A-N-G. All right, and then explain to the board your experience in the business and how you're going to help the doctor here. Um, my family was in the business for more about 20 years now. Uh, I've been with the, fa with the business since 2014, and throughout um, about four years, we I helped them open about five locations there uh, in Virginia and Maryland, um, Montgomery County. Restaurants? And restaurants, it? yes. And what would, how many employees would you typically think you would have in this type of operation? Uh, like what kind of food, what kind of service? How many, how many employees would you have? Oh, yeah. So um, front of the house, back of the house, how many would you have? Sure. Uh, back of the house, it's going to be about 10, about 10, 15 employees um, full time. Uh, front of the house varies 
from six to ten, I would say. And you would hire people from the neighborhood if, if possible? Oh yeah, 100%. And make sure that the people are alcohol certified and so forth? Yes. And then so you're the real person who has the experience, uh, the doctor here is making the monetary contribution, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Question, what's the Manchurian rice? Is that the name of the restaurant? Mm. That's the previous location. The previous location? Okay, Probably the previous. That's the one on 1010? Okay, that's. It was on the corner there. All right, that, all right, thank you. You okay. wanna hear from the doctor? Uh, certainly. Yep, doctor, step up. Give your name and address for the record. Ferdinand K. Huey, I live at 675 President Street, Unit 1806, Baltimore. And, and your uh, primary profession is that you're a surgeon, is that correct? correct. And, and you um, uh, bought the property? Um, it's you're buying the property, property, right? Yeah. And then uh, in this case here, you're gonna, you're planning on um, uh, getting um, your managers together and then you'll be there almost every day yes. sometime. And you primarily work at Hopkins, which is close by, and President Street is what, eight or nine blocks away? Yes. And you'll get uh, alcohol certified, is that correct? Yes. And you'll be familiar with our rules and regulations. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, commissioners, have any questions? No further questions. No further questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the application, the proffers from council and the testimony received, I would vote to approve the transfer. I concur and vote to approve the transfer. I uh, too uh, vote to approve the transfer of the ownership and the transfer of the location with outdoor table service and all premise catering. Good luck, Doctor. Good luck. Thank you for the courtesy. Thank All you. right, do good. Okay, Doctor. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. well, for the record. <coughs> Having considered one menu. Chick Fresh A, thirty-four eighteen A Annapolis Road. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. An application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under Article 12-903, small c, number 2, small i, small i, requiring 500000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities and seating capacity for 75 people. Please come forward. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Peter Previs on behalf of the applicant. Morning. Would you, uh, gentlemen, raise your right hands, please? Say yes, please, if you, if you agree. Yes. <laughs> okay, you can put your hands down. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I try to do as much as I can by way of a proffer because of a possible language barrier. Uh, to my right here is Mr. Babar Buyam. Uh, he is the owner, the principal of the, of the restaurant. To my left is Mr. John Carlos Simmons, who is a Baltimore City resident, who he will have no ownership interest in this premises but has agreed to go on the license as a, as a city resident um, and, and he's here. Um, th this is a request for a new Class B beer, wine and liquor license at an existing restaurant location. Uh, the, the, the restaurant is known as Chick Fresh A. It is a combination of um, Mexican and he's also putting in Peruvian chicken. Uh, t type of rotisserie chicken. Um, the restaurant was the first premises at this new built out s space for that uh, the, the Klein group had done. Um, and the work was actually done by his nephew. Um, and the work had been completed. And I have a contract or um, specifications for $578,500. Which I'll hand to the board now. I have three copies. And the existing restaurant seats 75 at least? And, and the existing restaurant seats 75 persons. And we have the floor plan, which I have uh, copies of here. It's also on, in the docket, but there are copies and there. And documents will be received. As well as the most recent version of the menu. Thank you. All the documents will be received. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bouillon is originally from 
Bangladesh. He's been in the United States since 2002. Uh, most recently, he's operated an Indian restaurant in New York for about 11 years. So he has liquor license experience uh, with handling alcoholic beverages at that restaurant. <coughs> Uh, his nephew and other family members had put this project together and after discussions it was decided that he would take it over. He has moved down to, to Baltimore. Um, he's signing a lease in a, a place in Middle River, which is just a stone throw through the tunnel. Uh, the premises operate seven days a week. His hours of operation won't change, which are Monday through Saturday from 10 to 10 and Sunday from 11 to 9. He is there seven days a week. He is a uh, hands-on operator. He will be there all the time. Basically, he has three, three staff present at any time. Uh, it is a fast casual where you order at the counter, and when your number is called, you, 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 you pick up your order uh, and take it back to your table. Uh, and he, he explains to me that even without alcoholic beverage sales, the majority of, of his business is already on sale as opposed to carry out. Um, he has liquor experience, however, he, he will, he has to take the Maryland uh, alcohol awareness training and he will have his other employees that serve alcohol also have the alcohol awareness training done. Um, with regard to the alcohol, there is no bar, there is no service bar. He expects that he will be primarily serving beer and wine, possibly sangria or Rufino, a, a, a red or Chianti. Um, and that will be done in the back, real cooler, with the order. And uh, and he's instructed. He will instruct everyone that if they look at least 30, that that you uh, that that they be carded. Uh, like I said, he's there on site, day in and day out. And he will also have his. Um, so we received an training. email from uh, this Ms. Oliver at the Lakeland yes. Community <coughs> Association that she met with him. She seems to be under the impression that this is a liquor store. No. Well, that's what her email says. His, and, and he has someone to interpret if, if we need help. I, I can understand them, but certain complicated things we, we need help with. But Did she met know it's with a restaurant? The yeah. And the restaurant's been there for a couple of years. I mean, she said she met with him, but. Yeah. Uh, he met with them. He, he's explaining that he intends to continue as a restaurant, with, but would just um, want to serve alcohol um, as an accommodation to the to the customers. Uh, and she asked him to assure that he's not going to try to turn this into a liquor store. Oh, is that what she's saying? Yeah, and he's saying, I know that I don't want to be a liquor store. The license that we're applying for does not allow for off sale sales in any event, and he understands that it's. He may have carry out burritos or, or chicken, but he does not have carry out alcohol, and he understands that and will um, okay. abide by that rigorously. Well, there is no request for live entertainment. There's no request for outdoor table service. He, he did meet with them and explain that it's the same operation. He just wants to be able to sell some beer and wine for on-premises consumption. Maybe you might want to. Um communicate with her and make clarify that so that he doesn't have any problems with the association yes sir um, commissioners have questions yes uh, what are the hours if you said it I, I didn't okay Mon seven days a week Monday through Saturday 10 to 10 and Sunday 11 to 9 11 to 9 and also we have a note in our file when we w went out there to inspect it that the restaurant was in full operation but that there needed to be more seating to be in compliance with the 75 seats. Yes, we, we, we submitted the floor plan, and before any license is picked up, we will be vigilant that we complied with the 75 seats. And that fits, right? Yes. You can fit 75 yeah. seats? Yeah, more than that. Yeah. OK. All right. Any issues with the uh, restaurant from the liquor side in New York? Did you no. have? OK, no. you understand that? Yeah. Have you moved here now? Yes. Okay. All right. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner yes. Blake. So a Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license does allow for on-premise consumption and elsewhere. Elsewhere meaning if a person would like to purchase a bottle of beer, a bottle of wine in conjunction with their food, they could be allowed to purchase that for off-premise consumption. However, what they cannot do is create a separate Package goods department. 
on the premises. I, Mr. Page, I, I thought that the law was still in effect, the old 47th Alcoholic Beverages District that new licenses. Um, no, Mr. Use. Priebus. Great. In any event. What they cannot do, Mr. Chairman and the Commission, is create a separate sure. package okay. for this department. Well, if that is the um, association's concern that they would be selling things to take away, maybe you need to have that conversation with yes, them. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything further? Nothing further. All right, thank you. On the basis, then, of the materials contained in the application, the exhibits received the proper from counsel and testimony. I'd vote to approve the new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. I concur and vote to approve this uh, new Class B beer, wine, liquor license. I to uh, join my colleagues and approve the new Class B beer, wine, and liquor uh, license. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Capital Investment. I'm sorry, Applicant Exhibit 1, Capital Investment. Applicant Exhibit 2, Floor Plan. Applicant Exhibit 3, Menu. Board Exhibit 1, email from Ms. Oliver, Lakeland Community um, Association President, dated... <coughs> January 14, 2019. Thank you. Thank you. True Chesapeake Oyster House, 3300 Clipper Mill Road. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license, an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under Article 12-1603CII requiring $200,000 in capital investment in restaurant fixtures and facilities and a seating capacity of 75 people. This is a request for outdoor table service and off-premise catering. Please come forward. Two gentlemen, uh, raise your right hands and be sworn, please. I do swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing. It will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Yeah, I do. You are? My name is Stephen Howard. I'm the applicant. And you are? Nick Shawman, uh, one of the co-owners. Okay. Good morning. How do you spell your last name? S-C-H-A-U-M-A-N. So which one of you gentlemen wants to tell us about the True Chesapeake Oyster House? I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, so uh, Steve here is one of our primary investors and co-owners. Um, I am co-owner of the local oyster in Mount Vernon. Um, and we are also part owners of the True Chesapeake Oyster Company. It's an oyster farm in St. Mary's County. And we are going to be building the True Chesapeake Oyster House in Whitehall Mill in Hamden. Um, we would like this to be the flagship restaurant of our oyster farm. Um, there's a little bit about uh, the team. The other partner is uh, Patrick Hudson and Chef Zach Mills formerly of Wit and Wisdom in the Four Seasons Hotel. So uh, pretty much what we want to do is renovate uh, the old sailcloth mill in Whitehall and uh, turn it into a traditional Chesapeake Bay oyster seafood house. How long do you think that process is going to take? Has it started? We've been working on uh, the legwork for about a year and a half now. A year and a half, yeah. And... Um, uh, hope to be open by Labor Day. Yeah, and uh, Chef Zach is actually finalizing uh, 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 the construction company that we'll be using uh, this afternoon. So that's why he's not able to attend. And uh, Patrick's stuck at the farm harvesting oysters. And what's the oyster season? We can harvest 12 months out of the year now. It's aquaculture oysters. Not the R months? Not the R months anymore. Not in the 21st century. There is also an R in refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put on the record um, the budget, the costs? Yes, it, it should be in the packet there. It's like the, the last uh, packet in the stack. But if you can put it on the record. You could just tell us, tell describe us. it in the amount. Yeah. We, there's a certain threshold that you have to reach, as you probably know, for a new license. So if you could just walk us through what your total uh, expenses were for the new license. So currently, our budget's at $950,000. Um, as you can imagine, this is a 100-year-old warehouse. Um, it needs a lot of work. Um, and we've been working very closely with uh, David Tafaro from Terra Nova. He's the owner of the building. 
Um, <clears throat> so there is a lot of architectural design um, uh, finishes. $160,000 in furnitures and fixtures, $340,000 in kitchen and bar equipment, uh, 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 $44,000 in service supplies, $30,000 point of sale system, um, other pre-opening expenses together, it all comes up to close to 950000 And you also have, uh, just so we um, have on the record, you have support, Mr. Chairman, from uh, Ben Ray from the Hamden Village Merchants Association, from Councilman Leon Pinkett the third, as well as from uh, the council president's office, specifically uh, the neighborhood liaison, Ms. Gardner. Yeah, all these documents will be received. And, and how many seats will this restaurant? 112 non-bar seats. 112. And, and then what about, I see there's outdoor table service. How many outdoor? Outdoor? We plan on doing um, patio service in the summertime, and that's about 56 seats, give or take. And the idea with that is, um, you know, we may do a crab deck during crab season in the summertime. So how many people will be handling alcohol? Well, we, um, we've currently working with our friend Chelsea, who's going to be our bar manager. Mm -hmm. um, Zach Mills also has a lot of experience with running the bar program. Steve's going to be on the license, and I live in Woodbury. So I'm going to be there on a regular basis. So we have at least three people who are going to be in charge of the bar program. Will they be uh, taking the alcohol certification? Yes, yes. we're all TIPS trained, okay. uh, including I've Steve. I've already taken it, yep. Okay. So you're familiar with our rules and regulations? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Howard, any issues with the Huntington Avenue license, partner's license? It looked like from our ap application there was a liquor interest. We did receive a liquor license for 2745 Huntington Avenue. Um, the only issue that we currently having, we were granted uh, an entertainment license, um, and that was revoked. Um, I believe there was some contention between our some friends, some 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 people in Remington. The the, the entertainment portion was was uh, was revoked, but the. Um, the license is good. But right, and that, that business is not operating at this time. You're not on that license. I'm not on that license. I'm on no. that license. Okay. And we're currently under construction on that. Um, the exterior is almost done, and we started interior uh, construction last week. Okay. So, and, the, and that revocation was about a technicality. There was never an operating entertainment business in there yet. Pardon me. If, if I may. Thomas Cypress, Deputy Executive yeah. Secretary. The license was never issued to that location. The board approved the license to uh, the Huntington area, but it was never issued because of an issue with zoning. Once the applicant provides all the permits to the liquor board and rescinds the request for live entertainment, the license could be issued. But as of yet, there is no license issued and uh, the applicant is not on uh, technically a license right now. Thank you for clearing, clarifying that. If I could, Mr. Chairman, one question. Mr. Ackers, I, I, one thing that always worries me is the amount of time. Uh, so uh, the applicants have said that they expect to open in September, right? And so if there's a six-month window. Actually, for new licenses, there is no hard okay. time for when the license has to be issued. That uh, only applies to transfers. Transfers. All right. Good. Thank you. And I see Mr. Catelli is on the uh, use and occupancy. Yes, uh, uh, but he wanted he wanted us to say hello. He's currently on hiatus. Okay. <laughs> and, and final question for me: What are your hours of operation? Uh, we'll be open from four to uh, eleven during the week, uh, midnight on the weekends, and we plan on opening uh, around eleven o'clock on Sundays for brunch service. Okay. Anything further? Nothing further. All right. Thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the application, the exhibits which have been received in evidence and the testimony received, I would vote to approve the uh, application for a new Class B wine liquor restaurant license uh, requesting outdoor table service and off-premise catering. 
I concur and vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with outdoor table service and off-premise catering. I join my colleagues and uh, vote to approve the new Class B uh, license with outdoor table service and off-premise catering. This looks like an excellent uh, venture. I hope. Wish you luck. Yes. Thank you all. Oysters on us, guys. Uh, thank we you. can't accept them, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. App exhibit one, business plan. Baltimore Eagle LLC, trading as Baltimore Eagle, 2022 North Charles Street. This is a class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, an application to transfer ownership and a request for live entertainment. Please come forward. Good morning, Chair Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Previs on behalf of the applicants. Uh, Ms. Lorraine Parrish is here, one applicant. Ms. Kathleen Church, the city resident, is the other applicant. Uh, also here is Ms. Bang Warren, who is, will be the full-time operator of the new premises. Can I ask all of you to raise your right hands, please? I do swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, Mr. Previs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to first start off by saying that the particular license at issue in this in this hearing is the original Baltimore Eagle license that has absolutely nothing to do with the other license for which there is contention and there was a prior hearing. Um, pur pursuant to legislation, um, the, 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 um, the, the law was passed to allow this license to be transferred and completed and put back into use uh, before J July 1 of 19, I believe it is. So we are here about that license. So if I may proffer, uh, with regard to the operation of the premises, I believe the board already knows the history that the, the Baltimore Eagle at 2022 North Charles Street closed in late July under that other license. And there, there is an issue as to secured creditors and, and, and whatnot with regard to that license. This, uh, this license will be the Baltimore Eagle LLC, which is the current owner of the real estate and was also the original applicant for the liquor license um, back when, when it was purchased from the, the original owners of the Eagle. Uh, at some point down the road, it may be, um, appropriate to change that but that would all be done with the, the the authority of the board so the current operation would be the the landlord entity would also be operating the business um, with regard to the operation it will continue the same motif uh, plans to expand um, kitchen hours um, starting off by lunch and hopefully brunch may turn into breakfast um, uh, and the, the, the business had, when it originally began, it was more of a, the regulars crowd and not uh, drawing from the, the population at large. And that, that has changed already. And, uh, and Ms. Uh, Warren uh, expects that that will continue to, to expand. Is that correct, Ms. Correct. Warren? Okay. Now she, she can testify if you have any questions, but she has 20 years experience. Um, most recently with the Crossroads restaurant in, in, uh, in Highland Town at Foster in, uh, in Highland. Is that right? Correct. Uh, she is already alcohol aware. And a certain I think it's first name. B-A-N-G. W-A-R-R-E-N. Um, so she has more than 20 years experience handling alcohol. She, her alcohol awareness certificate is currently not expired. She uh, will be there full time uh, as a manager and will uh, require that all of her staff be alcohol awareness certified uh, prior to going on to the floor. Um, the premises is, is there. Um, there possibly may be issues with the other litigation about certain furniture or what have you, and, but the, the, the place is there and it's expected to be operational within two weeks. Well, two, two weeks, weeks always means yes. a month to me by the time you get your, <coughs> your sign-offs from, from wherever you have to get them. But they're, they're ready to go back into business. Um, st staff is already hired. Things are right. ordered and ready to go um, and, and would like to make this uh, uh, an asset to the community again. With regard to that, uh, the last hearing we had about the other license, Mr. Minarchik, the, uh, the, the community association, Old Goucher? CNCA. CNCA. Um, 
A L A N M N A R C H I C. I believe it's M. No, I need his name. Okay. State your name. I'm Ian Parrish. Thank you. Thank you. You need the spelling of please. Yeah, it's actually have that. Okay. It it wasn't a trick question. No. In any event, Mr. Monarchic had made it clear that he was uh, he was comfortable and had knowledge of the the parish ownership as well as the four crazy guys LLC ownership and if if there was litigation that determined that one side or the other operated that that the original MOU that was entered into a couple years ago would still be in effect and that he is happy with with the operation by the parishes so there's already communication and uh, and and uh, an expectation of the community that this place uh, resume to, to to and does the MOU cover the live entertainment portion Mr. Parrish, I don't recall that off the top of my head. So can yes, you it covers everything. Okay, so you've wor worked out an agreement about the terms of live entertainment. Yeah, the uh, community association has. Uh, thank you. The community association has held uh, meetings in the facility, uh, so this is a history that goes back several years, and we're all um, getting along, which is great. Good. What's the nature of the live entertainment? Uh, in the past and in the future, we're expecting to have. Um, comedy events, uh, drag shows, there's uh, DJ, um, other performances, uh, there's a stage. Um, is there anything else that I'm forgetting? Karaoke. Karaoke. It says dancing in here. Do people also dance there? People dance, yeah. One, I've heard this from other places, and, and they've also told me that they plan to, uh, to carry this on as a drag brunch which has been very popular. And I know a lot of people get, get quite, a, quite a kick out of those events. Okay. And they expect to have those. Any questions? Anything? And, and there, there's no outdoor table service, right? That's been corrected. The, the use permit that is on file and was obtained in May of this year uh, does not have outdoor table service on it. I had checked the box because there's an area on the second floor where there's a patio mm -hmm. and it's technically not enclosed in the building. So I had checked outdoor table service, but it's, it's really n not outdoor table it's not service. Hmm? It's not on the sidewalk. It's not on the sidewalk. Okay. But since it wasn't in an enclosed structure, I, I, I called it that, but really it's, that had already been approved in, on, on the prior license, but that's what that is. It's an it's a second floor patio. Is that right? Right. Okay. Anything further? No. Okay. Uh, thank you. Then, on the basis of the materials contained in your application, which includes the legislation, um, proffers from council, testimony, and any exhibits, I would vote to approve the transfer. I concur and vote to approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment. I uh, join my colleagues in uh, approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Good luck. Thank you very much. Chairman, commissioners, is the existing MOU being incorporated to this? Yes. So uh, you've agreed to be um, uh, bound by the terms of the MOU? We're actually signers of the, of the MOU. Okay, so it will, uh, Baltimore Eagle the license LLC. will um, be subject to those terms yes, as absolutely. well to the extent they're enforceable. Thank you. Mr. Reeves, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Katana Sushi 843-45 South Munford Avenue. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. An application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service. Please come forward. Good morning, uh, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of applicants. Good morning. Gentlemen, would you raise your right hands, please? You swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I yes, I do. Ms. Fogelman. Thank you very much. Um, Katana Sushi is a Japanese restaurant in Canton serving uh, ramen noodles, sushi, and um, tempura. I've got a copy of their menu here for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I don't even know. I'll share. It's fine. 
All right. And um, they have been very successful in a spot where others did not, uh, at the corner of Boston Street there and um, Montford. It's, uh, it changed hands many times during the early 2000s, but for a good 10 years now, Katana's been uh, uh, doing it right. So um, enter Mr. Chen. Mr. Chen uh, attended college, uh, lived with his parents in Washington, and ran a uh, gourmet express Chinese restaurant out of the southeast Washington location for many years, I, mean, I believe 20 years. Parents sold the business and retired. Mr. Chen looking for another opportunity. Um, and so he came up to manage a Katana here in Baltimore, fell in love with it, decided to buy the place as uh, Mr. Um, Jimmy Chang was um, trying to get out of the business. His son, um, Jason, um, had been running the restaurant the entire time that it's been open. Um, and they've got a great relationship with the community. Um, Mr. Chen has done the uh, really the ultimate in, in, in uh, putting your money where your mouth is by moving to Baltimore and living above the Katana Sushi restaurant there on Boston Street. So um, he is also blessed because he has been operating, managing the establishment under Mr. Chang, who has been uh, alcohol management certified and licensed for a long time. Uh, Mr. Chen was has been TIPS certified since April 16th of last year when he started working at Katana. Um, but it's even better to have somebody who lives the day-to-day -day experience in Baltimore City and be able to provide so much information that uh, that he, he's passing on to the new owner. So. Um, that's really all there is to it. There's no change to the outdoor tables or anything. And in fact, I think Mr. Kanensky was earlier talking about 80-20 you know, uh, food to alcohol in, in um, certain restaurants. They are a B, so they file forms every year with the board. And, and according to uh, Mr. Chang, the last uh, accounting showed 4% of alcohol sales to food. So it's a small component of a restaurant with some devoted customers. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, have any questions? I don't want to take these from you. Yeah. Sure. I don't have any questions. I don't. I don't have any questions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Th uh, thank you. Then, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, the exhibit, uh, which was received in evidence, the proffer from counsel and any testimony, I'd vote to approve the transfer of the license uh, requesting outdoor table service. I concur and vote to approve the transfer of ownership with outdoor table service. I approve uh, the uh, transfer of ownership with the outdoor table service. Good luck, Mr. Chen. Good luck. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you. it. I call exhibits for the record. Exhibit one, menu. Happy hour, heaven. One nine zero one Golf Street. This is a class BD seven beer, wine, and liquor license, an application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, the address of 1901 South Gulf Street does appear on the non-compliance BD7 zoning list and must conform within two years of notice. For the record, Melvin J. Kanansky representing <clears throat> the uh, applicants in this case. This is an application uh, to transfer an existing license in the um, one of the nice points about this is that uh, Mr. Joseph has actually been there since February of last year. Um, I'm running and managing the place and waiting for the transfer to come through. Uh, he is familiar with the area. He says a lot of further, just in case he speaks, may I ask these two to raise their right hands and be sworn, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Kadensky. No, 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 no. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Yes. You know. Sometimes I'm behind too, but didn't make a difference. The most impressive thing is you were quoted by another attorney today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that. Keep those cards and letters coming as we tell them. Uh, so he's been there since February. Um, most of the people that are working there are people from the neighborhood. They have no problems. Um, the other applicant has been in the, uh, worked in the three or four or five different other places. Uh, is that familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board? They'll take the alcohol awareness course. And uh, this seems a pretty uh, seamless transition from um, the uh, previous owner to this particular uh, 
uh, owner during is, the. Is Mr. Scarpinato um, going to have an ownership interest? Our note says zero percent. That's correct. Oh, okay. She's just going to be um, compensated for being the city resident on the okay. thing. Okay. Um, but she's worked in, a, in a half a dozen other places, so she's going to can work there also. Um, like I said, during the last year, they've been there. They've had no problems with the neighborhood. And, yeah, you know, Gulf Street certainly is a, a residential area. If there were a problem, you would know about it. And uh, how many folks work for Mr. Joseph? I have five employees total. Okay. And how many of them handle alcohol? Uh, three out of the five. And are they all TIP certified? Yes, they are. Okay. And you're familiar with our rules and regulations? Yes, okay. Thank you. Commissioners, have any questions? I don't have any questions. Mr. Joseph, how, how often do you think you'll be at the establishment? The reason why I ask is you're not, you don't live too far away, but you live far enough away. So, Correct. Yeah, I'm there. Anticipated schedule. I'm there every day. Okay, good. Every day. And the only thing, I, have you reached out to the community at all? Have you talked to anyone in the community? And the reason why I ask is um, my recollection of the neighbors around Gulf Street are very engaged and very active, and I would... Have you reached out to them? Have you had a conversation? Yes, I have. I have uh, talked to the community association. Uh, actually, I provided food for them in their last meeting on Tuesday. So I'm familiar with the president. Uh, I'm very engaged in the community. So they all know we're up for the license. So they were kind of worried we were selling. So <laughs> they were kind of concerned. Okay. But uh, they're, they're happy that I'm there. And Mr. Kedensky has advised you about the zoning issue about the BG7 license? Yes. You're f so you're, you understand that? I do. Okay. Anything further? Anything further? Okay, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, proffers from council and testimony, I'd vote to approve the transfer with continued outdoor table service. I concur and vote to approve the transfer with continued outdoor table service. I vote to approve the transfer with outdoor table service. Good luck. Good, good luck. luck. Thank, thank you. you. No exhibits. You want to say anything or no? No, no good. Go <laughs> The Urban Oyster 1702 Whetstone Way. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license, an application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kedansky representing the applicants in this case. Ladies, will you raise your right hands, please? Uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. This is a um, application to transfer an existing uh, business in McHenry Row. Um, that's over there. The, uh, Miss Norton, for a period of years, had, <clears throat> I guess maybe not the words, not mobile restaurants, not the way we're not a restaurant in a um, uh, vehicle, but you in different places. And finally, she saw the app, a chance to uh, have a place where she could um, open up uh, and uh, be able to have a, basically a seafood business there. Uh, Mr. Saperstein, who is um, on the license as the uh, city resident, is going to maintain and stay on there. Um, the other, Miss Norton, and her sisters by the same mother. <laughs> so uh, they both of the young ladies are going to go ahead and, and they're going to uh, be there all the time. They'll be alcohol certified. Uh, they'll hire people from the neighborhood if um, uh, they can, and uh, they're going to be responsible. Uh, for the um, uh, operation of the business. Do you get your oysters from St. Mary's County? Yes, uh, some of them, yes. You heard that case yeah. earlier today? Yes, we do use uh, farm-raised oysters as well. Okay. He's still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm okay, and how many people um, handle alcohol? Uh, for the most part, it'll be myself, my mom, and <laughs> one other person. Um, <laughs> business partner you yes. uh, so and, and are, will everyone be tip certified yes okay and they, you all understand our rules and regulations yes okay uh, commissioners have questions no questions no questions okay thank you on the basis that the materials contained in their application the proper from council and testimony I vote to approve the transfer with continued outdoor table service I concur and vote to approve the transfer with continued outdoor table service. I concur and vote to approve the transfer of ownership with the continuation of live Good excuse me, Good outdoor luck. table service. Thank you. Thank you. So much. No exhibits for the record. Uh, Mr. Page, is that our morning docket? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. The board is in recess until 1 p.m. Thank you. Are we ready? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. 
Now begins the PM docket of the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City. The board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, there being no preliminary matters on the PM docket. Case number one, Chaz Joey, LLC, trading as Chaz Joey, 415 East Baltimore Street. This is a Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, and a Class AE, adult entertainment license. Here for violation of Alcoholic Beverage Rule 4.07A, open containers and illegal possession and consumption of alcoholic beverages on November the 3rd, 2018. Violation of Rule 3.12, general welfare, November the 3rd, 2018. Violation of Adult Entertainment Rule 3.05, small a, incorporation of liquor license rules and regulations applicable to licenses on November the 3rd, 2018. Violation of Adult Entertainment Rule 3.18, illegal conduct and codes compliance on November the 3rd, 2018. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kinesky representing the applicants, licensees. Uh -huh. Good afternoon. Those who might testify on each side, please raise your right hands. Yes. Uh, admissions or denials, Mr. Kadansky? Denial. Okay. Uh, Mr. Inspector? This case was brought to us by the two officers from the Central District. They were both served, uh, their lieutenant was served, and they are not here yet, Your Honor. Um, do we have any idea why? <laughs> they, they said they were going to be here when I served the lieutenant. Um, Mr. Kadansky, let's do, let us take the next one and come back to it, okay? No Apologize. That's okay. Could be traffic. I don't Forty two hundred Parkside Bel Air Inc. trading as Slim Ace Club, Slim of Ace Club. <coughs> Forty two hundred Bel Air Road. This is a class BD seven, beer wine and liquor license. Here for violation of rule four point zero one A, sales to minors on November the fourteenth, twenty eighteen. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kinesky representing the licensing. All the witnesses, please raise your right hand. Testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Uh, admission or denial, Mr. It'll be an admission. Okay. Do you want to explain what happened? Well, it was an license, and the first time happened, they just were not diligent enough. However, I would explain to the board that after that, was there's another time they tried. I'm not here saying that uh, when you call it the good boy letter or whatever it is, that uh, they were vigilant at that point and did not um, serve um, and minor. So, I Actually, this it. was before this incident. Huh? This was before the incident. Right. So yeah. it shows that they they, are, they were checking. It just didn't happen in this time here, and there was an error on their part. And uh, they're not a kind of place that had been here before before the board. Now, uh, this is the uh, first violation, and um, the licensees had it since 2016. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. Okay. Commissioners, have any questions? Have they? How have they? Have they implemented anything so to ensure this doesn't happen to have again? More people check. Yeah, you know, the problem is sometimes there's multiple people that are involved, but they're going to make sure they check everybody and be more they understand that there's only so many times you can get a, you know, uh, to say that you, it's the first time, there's only one first time, and this is it. Were they cooperative agent? Yes, sir. Um, and how many people uh, handle the alcohol at your place, sir? Uh, at, at different times, probably about six to eight different people. Okay, and so you've instructed them all that they had to be yes, very careful? I have. Okay. Are they all? Carol Smith. Carol Smith. Are they all uh, TIP certified? No, I don't think all of them are, but I'm instructing them to try to get them certified, the ones that handle alcohol more than anybody else. Okay. Anything further? Nothing further. Anything further? All right. On the basis then of the materials uh, contained in the charging documents, uh, the proffer from counsel, the admission, and the testimony received. I find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a, sale to minor, on November 14, 2018. I impose a $500 fine and give the licensee 30 days to pay. I too find a violation of Rule 4.01 a, 
sales to minors on November 14, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $500 fine with 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01a, sales to minors, on November 14, 2018, and I, too, join my colleagues in imposing a $500 fine. Be careful, sir. Okay, thank you. Ms. Kodetsky. Can I close the for the record? What is it, one, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective LeBron? Mm -hmm. What is it, two, investigation report, Inspector Perez? Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Are we still on the record? On the record, Applicant. Yeah. <clears throat> Applicant Exhibit One, letter of compliance dated March twenty first, twenty eighteen. Thank you. Have we heard anything from our officers? A Agent Chris Mullis, anything yet? No, no Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's do one more. Okay. Ecstasy Bar and Restaurant LLC. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Sure. Ecstasy Bar and Restaurant LLC, trading as my cousin's place, 3925-27 East Lombard Street. This is a Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on November the 14th, 2018. Please come forward. For the record, <coughs> Melvin J. Kaninsky representing the um, licensees. Will this be an admission or a denial? It'll machine? be an admission. Okay. Um, let's all raise our right hands anyway. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? This is an issue that's been uh, with regard to this location where they're trying to get the security people and the people who are working behind the bar to work together, make sure they check. In this case here, the person who served had only been working there two days. The security person did not check the person coming in. As a result of which, after this happened, the person was working there two days. She quit, and she had some sort of remorse. And number two, they've switched their security people. They got a whole new company because obviously their feeling was they're not doing their job, you know, checking people coming in. Um, they had a um, instance before, uh, as you can see, back in 17 uh, of a sale to minor. So. Um, uh, I've instructed them to make sure they, if the people who are working behind the bar cannot rely on the people uh, at the door, the security, then they should also ask uh, for um, ID. Uh, were they cooperative? Yes. Commissioners have questions? I don't have any questions so right now. This is, a, this is a, a, an establishment that has a, has a record. And... Um, as you had mentioned, Mr. Kadensky, this is the second sales to minor charge, as well as some general welfare charges. What are they doing to change their operations? I understand the employee turnover, I, I get that, but. They, well, they hired a new security company to come in and, to make sure, and they've um, told them that they have to make sure they check the people. They can't don't you know, do it and try to channel everybody through the same door when they come in, because there are multiple doors they get in try to channel the same people through the same same doors and the problem is once you sometimes you get a crowd and uh, they have to rely on the people who are attending bar to be a little more vigilant also when they come in because sometimes they you know two or three people come in and they didn't they think they're checked at the door and, and they weren't all right i you know it's not a good record uh, you know yeah, the general welfare had to do with a couple of brouhaha's that went over to some security people i not arguing with you about the minors thing. It did happen in 17. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the charging documents, the uh, admission, the proffer of counsel, and any testimony, I find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sale to minor on November 14, 2018. In light of the record, this is the fourth violation. Since taking the license in 2016, I'd impose a $2,500 fine and give them 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on November 14, 2018. And given the, their history, fourth violation, I concur with the imposition of a $2,500 fine and 30 days to pay. 
I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors on November 14, 2018, and would uh, agree with the imposition of the $2,500 fine. Thank you. I'd close up as for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore State Police Department Report, Detective Gatto. Board Exhibit 2, Investigation Report, Inspector Perez. <coughs> Badwall LLC, trading as Lombard Liquor and Bar, 1000 West Lombard Street. This is a class BD7, Bear Wine and Liquor License. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors on October the 25th, 2018. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kinaski representing uh, the licensing. With all those who are going to testify, raise their right hands, please. Swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Be an admission. Okay. What happened? In this case here, the um, gentleman that they were training at the time um, had only been there a couple days and um, made a lapse and only worked there a couple days and they explained to him they have to go ahead and check everybody subsequent thereafter. Here's a, this one here is a, a showing that they check people after that. Um, when they came in uh, back in, uh, I think it's December, is that right? December 14th. Yeah, uh, they did, and then um, the uh, licensee has uh, worked with putting additional lighting up and try to make the place um, a little more um, hard for people to come in and for minors to be uh, served. Um, the uh, licensee here has tried to work with the police department uh, has worked with direct feeds into the sheriff's office and so forth so that uh, they would be able to go along with anything that's happened um, in the neighborhood. Okay, and uh, which inspector handled this? Were they cooperative? Yes. Okay. And there are a lot of other people who want to testify. Um, so they've admitted the violation, so if you wish to be heard. If it's not about the violation, I'd rather the board make their disposition well, and we can you do want to hear okay, from Let's do that. It, it, uh, there's no need to hear testimony if you've admitted it. So on the basis of the um, materials containing the charging documents, the proffer, the admission, and any testimony, I'd find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on October 25, 2018. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sales to minors on October 25, 2018. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on October 25th, 2018. If you wish to be heard on disposition. Uh, I'm Dan Morrison. I'm the president of Please the... Please step up yep. to the mic. I'm the president of the Neighborhood Association. Uh, did you say Morrison? Dan Morrison. Because our, our reporter has to... Yep. M-O-R-R-I-S-O-N. <laughs> and what's okay. the Neighborhood Association? Uh, Holland's Brown House. Okay. Yes, sir. So I've been involved... <clears throat> as president of the neighborhood association since uh, they brought their uh, were beginning to bring their business in um, we have been struggling um, to work with them um, they have on more than one occasion have well I've I've appeared before the city on this is now multiple times for this business specifically um, regarding chap things that they have done um, they have misrepresented. They've actually lied on things well, that they've so said I've within our object, association. It really is, I don't know. Pertinent to this. Is there anything about the liquor board proceedings? Yes. Um, bas I'm here to to find out how this citation was going to be treated um, from the association standpoint. We are going to do everything that we can for the upcoming March date to make a case against this business continuing to operate in our neighborhood. Okay. Um, yeah for one of the many, many, many reasons. You're entitled to do that, and I would just uh, suggest if you have not done that in the past with success that you talk with our staff so that you do it properly Absolutely. so we have the proper petitions in front of us, okay? Is there an MOU now with the? No. No, there's not. When you say, and I, I don't want to go too far away because we're mm -hmm. really. Absolutely. When you say you're struggling to work with them, what does that mean? So, um, they have uh, the things that they have done incorrectly or things that they were been told by the city, um, things that they've done to the business, 
the way that they are operating, uh, operating as a liquor store, not as a pub. Um, there is nowhere to sit down in there to be served a drink. There is nowhere to sit down in there to be served food. Um, the police department has been in there, has identified those issues with the property. Um, the owners continue to come back and say, well, we didn't know or we weren't told. If you are operating a business of this nature, you should fully understand the parameters in which you are operating. And they have been. I mean, they've been cited and, and they've been violated on those. But I guess, and obviously, that's our job is to continue to have that oversight. But in what ways, I'm just trying to understand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's important from my standpoint that we have good businesses in the community. So I'm just trying to understand your comment. Sure. So when, the neighbor, when they approached uh, transferring the liquor license, the way that they described and how they were going to operate their business and, and got the, the support of the community is not the business that is operating now. Thank you. And especially in their proximity to an elementary school, which is only a couple of hundred feet away from their business, it was very important to us that they were going to be a part of the community, that they were not going to be fostering the type of activities that they are. And this has just been a repeated problem from day one. Thank you. Are there others who have something different? To, okay. Hi, Jody. Um, Public Safety for Union Square, neighboring association. Um, they've had well, you have to say your name again. Patricia or Hattie Hogan. Patricia Hogan, H-O-G-A-N. Um, they've had 86 narcotic calls. I, I, I'm not object. It's just not what we're here for. I understand. And, and nobody is advised. Yeah. This is not a re renewal license. This is a violation. Yeah. I understand, so. but you can't walk by there. You literally cannot walk by that store. And you guys know that. You you foster this environment where you allow these people to hang out there and so I have it's not what we're here for okay. not charged with that at the moment but. I, is he, are you Miss Singh I just want to say what is your name ma'am Karen Fretz F-R-E-T-Z I'm also from Union Square this establishment is across the street from an elementary school in a million years, this would not happen in the suburbs, particularly in a white neighborhood. It's a predominantly black neighborhood, a predominantly black school, and the violence that is occurring around there has grown exponentially since this store opened up. And we wanted to work with them, and they have not been particularly cooperative. I did some research. I won't read it, but I, it's appalling what happens to a neighborhood. And in that neighborhood are children. And this is impacting those children. In a million years, that would not happen across the street from an elementary school in some white neighborhood. I, I'm going to object for the record. I don't think that's the type of rhetoric that you want to have going out in uh, you know, any type of racial issue. Okay. Mr. have any questions? No questions. No further questions. All right. On the, uh, having found the violation of Rule 4.01, small a, uh, with a record similar to the one Previously, I'd impose a $2,500 fine in this instance and give them 30 days to pay. I concur and, and agree with the $2,500 fine given the record with um, 30 days to pay. So I, too, uh, we found the violation. I would uh, impose a $2,500 fine and I would have uh, suspended for a week, um, but I'm in the minority, the week to sit down and make sure that the licensee understands that need to engage with the community you need to work these things out and have the police at the table and have the liquor commission staff at the table at all you know because it sounds like there are issues that are, frankly are bigger than your establishment and that also coincide with the neighborhood so there's a lot of discussion that needs to happen i would have imposed a week in addition to twenty five hundred dollars thank you thank you positives for the record what is it one Obama city police department detective green hill what is exhibit two, investigation report, agent Chris Amalis, licensee exhibit one, license, I mean, letter of compliance dated 12 14 2018. Thank you. Your Honor, I just got a hold of the captain. If that officer was involved in a altercation, he's out of medical, so he would not be on that. Why didn't he tell us? That I'll find out tomorrow. Oh, let's recall the case. <clears throat> Recalling the case of Chaz Joey, 415 East Baltimore Street, BD7 license, adult entertainment license, 
violation of Rule 4.07A, open containers, on November the 3rd, 2018, violation of Rule 3.12, general welfare, on November the 3rd, 2018, violation of adult entertainment rule 3.05A on November the 3rd, 2018, violation of adult entertainment rule 3.18, illegal conduct on November the 3rd, 2018. Please come forward. So we just have the police report. Is that correct? Um, I make a motion to dismiss. Well, I don't think we're bound by hearsay and we've got this report, so I would deny. Well, I can't cross-examine the, the police off the um, report um, based on the testimony that's there. Um, I'd proffer to the board, and I just want to hear from everybody, that this incident did not happen in the establishment. It happened outside of the establishment uh, on the pavement, that the individuals that were involved, uh, that case has been null prost. I have records of that. And there's no um, proof even in the police report of an open container, anybody drinking from an open container. Um, and um, I'd profit that, but I actually have the security guard that was there when it happened. But I'd rather cross-examine to see what the police officer saw and You're what- right that the report doesn't say anything about an open container. And, and none of the inspectors were there. Okay. So, well, go ahead, Commissioner. No, that, that, that's right. Um, so I wouldn't be able to find a violation of open container. Um, so there is the um, assault, and you say that it was uh, prosecuted. It was uh, not prosecuted. Yeah, I got a copy for the. Excuse me. You know why it was not prosecuted? It's not prosecuted. Why was it null process? I find it's hard to believe, but I don't represent the state of Maryland. I'm guessing nobody showed up. Uh, anyway, um, this is uh, not an easy one to do. I, uh, I'm unable to find violations under this, under the facts and the proof. Commissioners? Do you have the uh, adult entertainment? I was looking at that. Uh, right yeah, I have the adult. Oh, um, never mind. Thank you. You have it? Yes, I have it. Let me just say that if it happened that on the payment, that that, there's nothing to do with adult entertainment outside the licensed establishment. Um, right, the, there are a couple of violations under the yeah. adult entertainment well, the, rule. Well, I have the security guard. It was right there when it happened. We also have a AV audio regarding that gentleman if everybody wants to listen to it has some graphic language in it was so there language in the rule that is covers the evidence we have Does it have to be, um, it, it looks like, 
don't think the rule says that it has to be um, and let's see. Which rule? I'm looking at four. Uh, dollar entertainment rule no, is the, um, 3.05A and 3.18. Put testimony from the people that saw it happen. I don't, I don't know think it's necessary. Hmm? I don't know what the issue is yet. Oh, okay. Well, the, so just going over the first rule, um, the first violation, the rule doesn't contemplate that it has to be open. The rule says open illegal possession consumption. No well, evidence. If you look at it doesn't say open unless <coughs> I'm missing something. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. You could walk out of a liquor store with a bottle and you could charge them with that even though it's a closed container. That's true. All right, we got to move this along. Do you find a violation, Commissioner? Well, I, I'm on a motion now. I'll put testimony in if you think you're going to go forward. Well, I've already said that I'm dismissing. Okay. I'm going to hear what the Commissioner said. I mean, there won't be any need if there isn't. Yeah. Well, while you're deciding, Commissioner Greenfield, what's your. Sure. I, um, I'm going to concur with the uh, Chairman. I. The, the lack of the police officer being present for cross-examination and I I think uh, yeah, I think the, the lack of uh, the police officers presence and uh, the um, discrepancy in the open container uh, language in the charging document suggests to me that um, we can't move forward on this all right I um, I Concur with my colleagues uh, just reviewing the rules, all four of the different rules. Um, I don't think there's enough here in the discrepancies uh, in the police report, the police officer not being present to testify as to the open container and the other discrepancies. I will agree with my colleagues. All right, the, the four charge violations are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Try to close this for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department report, Sergeant Ostrander. Board Exhibit 2, District Court case search. Thank you. Inspector. <coughs> Will you let the captain know that we had to dismiss all the charges? Thank you, Joe. <coughs> Charo Negro, 4617-19 Eastern Avenue. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on October the 26th, 2018. Please come forward. I'm going to let's, uh, go forward on their, their own here. Okay. Thank you. Um, everyone that's going to testify, please raise your right hand. I swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing it will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Right. Are you Ms. Salas? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're charged with a sale to a minor on October 26, 2018. Do you admit or deny that that occurred? Uh, we go this charge, yeah. You admit, sir? Yeah. Jesus Romero, R O M E R O. Hold on a second. What? Romero, R O M E R O. And Mr. Romero, what's your involvement? Um, I'm a. Um, as my wife. Oh, you're so married to Ms. Salas. Yeah. Okay. But Ms. Salas, you agree that this did occur? Yes. Okay. Do you want to tell us what happened on that evening? Uh, we wasn't there. But, uh, uh, so they call us. Uh, they say uh, one of uh, our bartenders served to minors. So 
when I we hear that to uh, try to avoid this. I mean, we we got this charge. So, have you uh, had occasion to speak with the bartender about this incident? Yeah, we did. We did. I mean, most of the time we try to uh, train everybody, but the, that night was uh, unbelievable because it was only like three or four people in the bar. It was was nobody there basically, and uh, they commit this kind of uh, mistakes. Well, you've had this license for almost 10 years, and this is yeah. only the second time that you've been before the board. It's the first sale to a minor, so you need to Yeah, this is why we try to control everything, but, you know, sometimes everything runs out of our, our hands. That's why we then request uh, Melvin's uh, services, because we know we, we, we're guilty, so we're here to, to do whatever we need to solve this kind of situation. Are they cooperative with you? Yes. Okay. Can, do the commissioners have questions? No questions. No questions. Okay. Um, the last violation was uh, in 2011. Um, so it seems like you're running a good operation. I hope you will continue to be vigilant. We'll try. Thank but on the basis of your testimony uh, and the materials contained in the charging documents, I do find a violation of Rule, rule 4.01, small a sale to minor on October 26, 2018. I'd impose a $500 fine and give you 30 days to pay. Okay. okay. Uh, you're on uh, hold, hold on, we have others. to rule. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on October 26, 2018. Given that this is the second violation, I understand it's the first of minors, I would impose a $650 fine. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on October 26, 2018, and I will concur with uh, Commissioner Hafey and impose a $650 fine. Okay, the fine is $650 plus the administrative cost. You have 30 days to pay. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Um, Inspector, what is I need your name. Uh, Stephen uh, H.A. Stephen with a V? Yes. Thank you, Inspector. Give me one Thank second. you. I'd close it just for the record. Uh, what you're is right. uh, can I make an observation right quick? Um, I mean, in this kind of situations, I mean, most of the time the employees, they make the mistake like my employee over here. Uh, but they just walk away and we deal with the situation like this, uh, you might want to consider, uh, you know, either uh, find them too or... Uh, it's your responsibility no. when you take I the know, I know. It's your establishment. Uh, or uh, I know some other states, they require the employees to be certificated to serve alcohol, to go to the classes because that way they, they assume the responsibility and I think they, they are more clear what they, their job is. But we so certainly it's just an observation, you know? we encourage all of our licensees to have their uh, staffs uh, go through the training and be certified. Yes. Yeah, but it's got to be only one person, right? You're, no, no. You know, and, and any everybody? of your staff members can be right. certified okay. and should be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Another. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. I close it for the record. Board of Civil One, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective Gatto. Board of Civil Two, Investigation Report, Agent Chris Malice. Waverly Tavern, 3801 Old York Road. This is a Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of Rule 4.20, small c, small i, small i, Class BD7 licensees, open and operating tavern at all times on September the 26th, 2018. Please come forward. Um, Council. Good afternoon. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of licensees Bebek Gautam and uh, Shakar Karki. For those who are going to testify, please raise their right hand. And I, Mr. Previs is here on behalf of another licensee. Oh, I'm sorry, did, I'm sorry your, your Honor. Um, Peter Previs on behalf of the outgoing licensee who's not, whose name is not yet removed, Kendra Lutel, L-U-I-T-E-L. -E okay, thank you. And I have a brief preliminary matter. Okay, but can everybody just raise their right hands, please? Thank you. Raise your right hands, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Mr. Fogel. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, preliminarily, I want to apologize to uh, the board and, and to my client, but this is something that information that didn't become fully aware and available to me until about 11.30 this morning. I mentioned this morning, um, uh, Mr. Tom Eckers and I had a telephone conversation about 10 days ago today. Um, it, it was a 
uh, appears to be a miscommunication or a misunderstanding on my part. At that time, he had asked if um, we could put the Waverly Tavern case in on February 21st. I thought he meant this hearing set for the 17th. Um, and I said, of course, and the purpose of that was to, uh, my understanding was, was to engage the community during that time. Um, it turns out that when I was out in the hall um, during the hearings, waiting for one of my hearings this morning, he came out and I said, why is this still on here? And he said, well, no, no, I meant that the transfer hearing is the 21st. We're going with this today. And I said, okay, I'm so sorry. I misunderstood. Was unable to get in touch with one of the licensees at all. Um, they wanted to bring a security guard in to testify. Um, Mr. Carkey was the only licensee I was able to get here. And of course, I immediately communicated to the clients that it was my understanding that they were not required to be here today. I had to run back to my office and get the file uh, at lunch. So I understand people are here. Um, I just b believe that they're not fully prepared for this hearing today uh, due to that miscommunication. So I'm just putting that out there on the record. Thank you. Um, okay. But they are contesting this issue? Yes. Um. Thomas Akras, Deputy Executive Secretary, just to clarify for the record, uh, this matter was actually posted on in December of 2018, and it's been posted for about two weeks. Uh, when I spoke with Mr. Fogelman, it was regarding the transfer application, which had not been posted yet, and which we had talked about internally scheduling uh, a month ahead of time. So if this matter were going to be postponed as per our rules and regulations when there is a matter that is docketed and posted, a written request for uh, postponement should be filed with the board. Uh, Mr. Fogelman has made numerous written requests for postponement prior to this case in various other cases. Well, um, I, don't, I didn't hear you ask for it. Was that what you were requesting a continuance? Yeah, I, I know I have to be back down here on, on the 31st. I was just going to ask for two weeks. Um, and would we have to post everything again if we did that? We'd have to post, yes, we'd have to post online again, post all the information. In fact, we're posting uh, right now for the 31st uh, today. We've already closed out our docket. Who is not here? Because Mr. Cotri was the one who was there at that time, right? Mr. Karki, um, I don't believe Mr. Karki, no one was on duty that night. Oh, I guess his uh, name another. is very similar to the person. Mr. Patrillo. Okay. Karki and Katri. Katri, sorry. Okay, so I misunderstood. Um, so I'm sorry, who did you need as a witness? Um, I, uh, there, there's a security guard who's, who's there seven days who, is, uh, who wanted to come in and testify. Um, I know Mr. Gautam would want to at least, uh, it, a lot of this is for mitigation as far as the people who were going to be here. Okay. Uh, and who's here on the other side? Uh, Ms. Lightchaser for, and uh, Mr. Kumkum from the Community right. Association. Right. Why don't you come on up, please? Oh, and this is. Uh, you have to well speak well. into the microphone. That's why I'm asking you to come so, forward. Okay, so we are Your from name, please, uh, Alina Lightchaser from WIA. That's Waverly Improvement Association. Alina. Alina. A L I N A. And uh, I need Rob from the Baltimore Good Neighbors Coalition. Is this gentleman with you? Yes. Inez, I N E Z. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kunzan Cirilli, also co president for the Waverly Improvement Association. Okay. And so, how do you spell your What is your name? Kunzan, K U N S is in Sam, U N Cirilli, S is in Sam, W E E L E Y. So, I know I recognize you folks because you've been here before. Um, if we were to bring this back in two weeks, would you be able to attend? Um, I work full time, so that would be difficult for me. And um, and we gathered all the paperwork needed to. Um, I mean, can you submit the paperwork to us? We've, I, I, we we've have submitted some, it. We submitted. That's what's in this packet. That yeah, the to Tom Agris. Mm -hmm. Clarkson. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we would have your information. I believe so. Okay. I hope so. How about uh, you folks? Well, I'm not sure. Could you speak into the mic, please? I'm not sure. I have to look at my schedule. I'm old school, so I don't have it on my phone. 
I know the feeling. Mr. Chairman, what if we um, combine both cases? If I heard that there was a transfer occurring at the same time, or is that? Well, the problem is these are the licensees charged right. with the violation. The new people are not charged. No, with I understand. But if we have two, to, since it's the same day, we can make sure that, assuming the community is coming out for a transfer, that they also come out for the violation of the same day. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, this matter had previously been postponed at the request of the police this would, we were this waiting would for the, the return I'm sorry we were waiting for the return of the detective who was out on medical oh. and he's now oh. present so this was a previous postponement if we were to postpone today it would be a second postponement am I correct Mr. Akras that is that is correct and but that but that was not their request right it was the police department's request. that was the police department's request well, unless the commissioners disagree with me, I would um, continue it for two weeks to allow them to have their witness. I agree. <coughs> Can I, I can say something really quick? Yeah. Um, they do not have a seven-day-a-week security guard. That is not true. Well, I mean, we'll find that out when we have the hearing. Uh, okay, but do we need to testify that they don't have that? Well, you may. You said you can't be here. You may submit whatever you want. Through writing? Yeah. Okay, because I was told last time I couldn't or submit if writing. If this lady's coming she, and has, to, if she has knowledge of what's going on, she can testify, or he can. Okay, because this is this doesn't seem right to me. Okay, I don't physically live close to the area. However, I am representing our coalition. Okay, well, if you have knowledge of this and you want to put it in writing, you we, you can submit that. I can submit yeah, it, and sure. you'll take and it as, as evidence. Yes. Okay. Like we are, and we're receiving documents today. You've got these, I suppose, Mr. Fogelman. I have not, but no. I'll make sure I have them. Copies of Thank everything. you. And, okay. And what's the uh, new date? The 31st, Mr. Page. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. Well, this case continues to get more difficult all the time. Uh, so, what's the next date we have for everybody? Well, well Your Honor, I. It's my understanding that we're going to put that transfer case in on the 21st. The 7th would be the date of transfer of ownership. But it's not February 7th is an all-day violation docket. No, we're not doing that, then. So uh, the next date is the 21st. Of February. Of February. Will everyone be here on February 21st? Okay, let's set it in for February 21. My apologies to all. I'm okay. sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. The next Please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Again, my apologies. Thank you very much. We want to just make sure also, in case she's not available, we'll just still accept her written oh, yes. document. We, okay. We, we, we are not bound. We can take written testimony and other things. The, I was the told issue last is, time that you couldn't. Well, the, the trouble is, of course, they can't cross-examine you about your testimony then. So we ha if they say the opposite, it's kind of hard to figure out. So it's... I mean, and so we can accept it, but it's like it's not going to work either way. I mean, uh, I can you be here on the 21st? I guess I'm going to have to be. Or find someone who knows this who could come in. Okay. Yeah, to, to testify. All right. That would be great. We'll okay. We oh. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, it's, I'm not doing your schedules, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. Are we, uh, Stacey, have we got everything in the record? Yes, um, we're holding all exhibits in for the um, actual hearing, correct? Okay, yes, thank you. She's holding all those exhibits for the next hearing? Yeah, she said that in the so we, said in the one. Are you okay. good? Yeah, I went off the record. Do I need to go back on? For I don't think so. I got both the exhibits right. So. Okay. okay. Okay, Mr. Page, that concludes our docket. It does, Mr. Chairman. The board is in recess until Thursday, January the 31st, 2019, 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you, Stacey. Oh. <laughs> 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 the 21st of Stacey, I got something.